The rotator cuff is a group of muscles and tendon that surround the shoulder itself. The muscles start on the shoulder blade and are four muscles with one large muscle at the front called subscapularis and three muscles that are based at the top and around the back of the shoulder. The top one is quite commonly affected, is named supraspinatus and these tendons come and surround the arm bone itself and attach directly to the bone. Tears and symptoms occur when you have tears of these tendons on their attachment on the bony surfaces. They can either be partial thickness and either be at the top of the tendon or its undersurface, but more commonly these tears are full thickness where there's a disruption between the tendon and the bone at that interface. And these tendon tears at a full thickness is when the tendon lifts off the bone insertion completely. Rotator cuff tendon tears are disruptions within the tendons themselves. These tears can either be partial thickness uh, or, full, or full thickness. Uh, when a tear is full thickness, the tear involves the tendon disrupting off the bone itself. Partial thickness tears can either involve the upper or lower surface and often has less symptoms in terms of pain, loss of range of movement and function. Common symptoms that are experienced with rotator cuff tears are firstly pain, which is often ill-localized around the shoulder, but can be felt on the outer aspect of the arm and can travel down to the elbow. Pain is often exacerbated with movement, especially anything that is at or above the level of the shoulder. Uh, with pain also can come a loss of range of movement and difficulty with overhead activities. And in larger tears, you may lose some strength and subsequent function of the arm itself. Rotator cuff tendon tears are common. Most rotator cuff tendon tears can be dealt with without an operation. And a trial of corticosteroid injections to reduce inflammation, as well as some dedicated shoulder physiotherapy, may mean that your pain uh, reduces and that shoulder function can improve. Those tears, however, that are larger, or if you're a young person or someone who has more demands on their shoulder may require an operation. Certainly pain that awakes you at night and keeps you from sleeping, as well as pain that stops you from doing things that you like to do in life, may be a good surgical indication. If you require shoulder surgery for a rotator cuff tendon tear, this can be done through arthroscopic keyhole means. The surgery itself requires you to come into hospital and have a general anaesthetic where you go to sleep completely and during the operation through small incisions around the shoulder I'm able to introduce a camera into the shoulder to assess uh, the various structures in the shoulder to confirm that the rotator cuff tendon is torn and then using special anchors that screw into the bone and then uh, stitches and instruments that allow me to then secure the rotator cuff tendon back to the bone. Once the repair is performed, the shoulder can be tested throughout range of movement to ensure that the rotator cuff repair is performed securely. Uh, you are then placed into a sling and your early rehabilitation starts with learning exercises through your physiotherapist to improve the function of your shoulder. Rotator cuff surgery takes approximately an hour to perform. The surgical process, however, tends to last for the better portion of a day um, from your admission until discharge when you're comfortable and have recovered from your shoulder operation. The common risks with this procedure include the risk of either bleeding or infection, which are extremely uncommon. Pain can also be an issue in the post-operative period but will improve in time and we uh, give you enough tablet medication that should ensure that your shoulder is comfortable to do rehabilitation. The risk of re-rupture is also low, but it does depend on your age, the quality of your tendon itself, as well as the tear size, which a greater risk of re-tear if your tear is large to begin with. After your surgery is performed, I put waterproof dressings around your incisions. These dressings, uh, whilst waterproof, are best kept as dry as possible during the post-operative phase and are to be left intact until your two-week review. 
At two weeks, we will see you and take off these dressings and examine your wounds and ensure that they're healed appropriately. After your surgery, your shoulder will be put into a sling. The sling should be worn for the first four weeks to ensure that the rotator cuff heals appropriately. We ask that you use the sling, especially for the first two weeks, to ensure that your pain is well controlled before commencing more exercises with your physiotherapist at that point. During the time that you're wearing a sling, we ask you to avoid driving as it is unsafe and you do not have control of your vehicle.